If you are having any timing issues while studying for step two CK, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the general outline of step two and how much time you have per question. I'm also going to be talking about how to figure out where your timing issues are and how I figured out mine and fixed my timing issues. I'll also be sharing throughout the video different time-saving strategies that I have. I hope this video can be helpful for you. As a background, my name is Alyssa. I'm a fourth year medical student and I was fortunate to score over the 90th percentile on both step two and level two. So I've been sharing how I did this on the internet and I hope it can be helpful for some of you out there. Let's go ahead and get started with some time-saving strategies. As a general background, the USMLE has eight different sections with up to 40 questions per section and you have 60 minutes per section. What this equates to is about 90 seconds per question. Some questions you'll be able to figure out and move on quicker than that. Other questions will require more time from you, but on average, you should be spending about 90 seconds or less per question. I did read some, re read some research a while back that was suggesting that students who spend more time per question tend to score better. Don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing if you're taking a lot of time. It's actually a good thing, but you just need to speed things up a little bit. How do you figure out if you're spending too much time on a question or on a section? The way I did this was on UWorld, you're able to see how long you're taking to answer each question. It'll give you like the number of seconds. What I did is after I took a section, I looked at those questions that I spent more time on and I analyzed it. I was able to break things down into where my issues usually were. And my issues were usually some sort of knowledge gap or not understanding the question appropriately or my issue happened to do with like distractibility or focus. I'm going to talk about each of those in depth a little bit more. In terms of a knowledge gap, sometimes I would get it down to two different answers and I wasn't able to distinguish which was the actual correct answer because they were both pretty good. Basically what this took was just doing a lot more questions and really understanding my stuff. Something that got me a lot of the time was the different arth arthritis conditions. So osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, septic arthritis, those sorts of things. So being able to really know the difference between those and what what are the testing parts like the testing aspects that's how I, I was able to sort of fix that knowledge gap and by doing a lot of questions you're also looking at questions and analyzing them and realizing where they're able to trick you or like trip you up so by doing a lot of questions that really helped me and by doing a lot of questions you're also able to quickly look at the question and know what the diagnosis is and that's really important that recognition aspect because the faster you can recognize what disease is most likely going on, then you're able to figure out the, the best next step more quickly. That's more of a step one concept, but it's really, really useful. And by doing a lot of questions, you're able to do that more quickly and that can help you with sort of the time saving element. But if you don't know what the answer is and you're between two, the thing to do is, is just to flag it and move on and then come back to it at the end of the section. Sometimes I noticed that it's like my brain was working in the background and I was able to figure out the question or I was able to figure out the answer the next time that I looked at it when I came back to it or just having like a fresh set of eyes on it. Again, you're able to recognize a detail that you didn't really pay attention to before. So I thought that that was really helpful for me in terms of like managing that knowledge cap. But it's, it's key to not spend too much time just sort of sitting there vacillating between two options. I did that a lot. And I recognize that, okay, I just have to flag this and move on. We'll come back to it later. The next ma major category that I had was headspace. I, I sort of lumped this into distractibility earlier, but really it's, it's headspace. The step two exam is, is so much headspace and staying sound in the mind as much as it is knowledge, right? You, there's so much information that you have to know, but you also have to not let yourself get tripped up if you think you got something wrong and you just have to be able to like move forward and treat each new question like like it's a new opportunity and not be reminded of your your other questions and worrying about those so it's very much so a head game so i recognized that my issues with timing were sort of wrapped into the biostats questions and the multi-part questions. So with the biostats questions, I would spend a lot of time on these questions and I would sort of get like caught in this timing vortex and I would lose track of how much time I was actually spending. And then I would realize that I was spending minutes on these questions. Then I would end up moving forward in my block and I would be stressed about how much time I spent on biostats and how much less time I have now moving forward. So what I started doing is I would save that biostats question until the end. 
I'd attack it then. That way I had you know time to work through it without worrying about how it was going to affect my other questions. Also, along with that are those multi-part questions. I realized that those questions particularly affect my headspace moving forward and the questions after it. So if I were to, you know, you can, you can sort of tell where the question is going and if you got it wrong. So that would cause me to be thinking about that on my next questions. And because I'm thinking about that, I'm distracted. I'm not actually reading the next question. So then I would have to reread the next question which uses up a bunch of time. So by saving my multi-part questions and then the biostats questions for the end of the end of the section, that was able to just save me time just because of like the headspace aspect. Another thing that's really important for me is in terms of headspace was if I had a question that I genuinely just didn't know or had never heard about, or I thought I was pretty close, but I couldn't really figure out like if it was A or B, basically what I did to just help myself is to just say, you know what? That could have been an experimental question. It's okay, let's just move on. There are exp experimental questions on step two. We don't really know how many there are, or at least I don't. Maybe that's something one could Google. There are experimental questions that don't count towards your score. So basically, if I had something where I was like, you know what? I don't know what that is. I would just be like, oh, hey, that could have been an experimental question. And then that would just make me feel better moving forward rather than being like, oh my gosh, well, how's that going to affect my score? And then it would distract me and then I would end up using a bunch of my time resources in my brain. That was something that was important for me was to just be like, okay, it's no big deal. Like it might not even matter anyway. That's just me. If, if that doesn't help you, just disregard that. So yeah, I guess I've hinted at it a little bit, but the issue of needing to reread questions again and again is a huge time sink and I'm guilty of needing to do this a lot. One way that I sort of attacked this was during dedicated, I would, I would initially, I was studying more in like a quiet environment in my apartment and it was more controlled and the space was clean and everything. But then towards the end, I was putting myself in more busy environments. That way I could handle the distractions that came up because on test day, the testing center, you know, is hopefully a controlled environment. But in my exam, there was somebody who was like coughing and hacking the first block of it. And you just can't control for those sorts of things. Basically what I did is I put myself in this environment towards the end of dedicated where I was studying, where I was busy, where people would talk periodically. And then there were like periods of lulls. And that way I was able to be able to handle a little bit of distractions. That way I wouldn't have to constantly like reread and reread and reread questions because of distractions going on during like in the testing center. I thought that that was good for me. And lastly, as far as some other general time-saving tips, one thing for me was if there's an image in a question, I would just look at that image and see if I could answer the question based on the image. More times than not, I could just select the correct answer based on the image. So if there's an aortic dissection, it's pretty easy to recognize that on a CT and I would just, you know, choose that. I would go ahead and, and choose that, and then I would flag it and come back to it if I had excess time at the end of the block. Then I could read the question stem and make sure I didn't miss out on something crucial within the question stem, but oftentimes you can just answer the question based on the image. But one thing I did wanna talk about is just the concept of stress. So you might be struggling with timing issues now. That doesn't mean you're going to be struggling with timing is issues on the actual test day. The test day is stressful and Stress can do a lot in terms of allowing you to focus, allowing you to read more quickly. Those things can really make a huge impact in terms of timing. I had a lot more time at the end of my blocks when I was in the actual exam than I did in any practice exam. It might be the case where you're gonna be totally fine on the exam and you don't really even need to worry about this, but I thought I would just share that anyway, that my test day experience was much more different in terms of timing than other days. I hope that this video is helpful. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. If you have any um, other information that could be helpful for others below in terms of time-saving things, please share it and we'll see you later. <laughs>